Hey, how are you people? Good day to everybody. What's happening? Uh, this is the first of its kind that I'm going to start with uh, this platform, this forum, because um, we observed that uh, most people, even I was guilty about this, you know, finally you know, looking for a life partner, and then people begin, begin, begin to cancel, you know, go for pre canceling before the wedding. Then the issue now becomes after the wedding, you are finally married to the man or the woman of your dream. What next? I see people forget that after pre counseling session, there should be post counseling session. Now, not by the parents, because it was not the parents that did the pre counseling session with them. It was a godly person, a matured person, a trained person. Now, before I continue, this platform is for the newlyweds. When I say newlyweds, and when I say newlyweds, if your marriage is within one year, two years, three years, five years, seven years max, your marriage is still new. There are things that you, should, you still need to understand because the first few years of your marriage is the most important. If by venture you lay the wrong foundation, it means that uh, your marriage is in serious problem because let's not forget, there's no marriage without problem, there's no marriage without challenge. And I want to quickly read these scriptures in um, some scriptures for us because whatever we do is based on God's word. Because these days now people are misinterpreting what God did not say. As a matter of fact, some people have this uh, school of thought that uh, you know, God was not the one that originates marriage. Unfortunately, some Christians. Ecclesiastics chapter 4 verse 9 to 12 two are, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their effort. For if either falls, his companion can lift him up. But pity the one who falls without another to lift him up. Also, if two lie together, they can keep warm. But how can one person alone keep warm? And if someone overpass one person, the two can resist him. A cord of twin strand is not easily broken. Now this verse reminds us that two are better than one. They highlight the importance of doing life together, no longer seeing ourselves as alone. Now what I want to just quickly say, uh, just to make you understand, marriage is sweet, marriage is good. It was uh, 10 verse 12 24 to 25 and let us watch out for one another to pro to provoke love and good works not neglecting to gather together as much as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging each other and all more as you see the day approaching one way to keep a marriage healthy and vibrant is to practice these verses in Hebrews daily. Now, like I said, this forum is for new new words. People who are just married or who has, who their marriage has not is not that long, one year, two year, and for me at this um, seven years. Why is it necessary for you as a couple to still be going to still seek counsel from godly married men and women? To see counsel from um, godly counselors. Now, they might not be a pastor, but because one, they are godly, they are children of God, and they are trained, it is important for you to sort them out and then ask for counsel. Because Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. I can guarantee you where I am today is because of counsel. There are so many things that uh, I don't have answers for. Even as a marriage counselor, I don't have answers for them. 
but there are people that I run to. Now, when I say run to them, I'm not running to them to rubbish or to uh, uh, wash my dirty liner in the public. I'm running to them for counsel, even though at the end of the day, I and my partner have the final say. So one of the things I want to quickly share with you today, and I will share, I'll start sharing from now on, especially for new, newlyweds, is to help you. There are things that you need to put in perspective. There are, other, there are things that you need to understand that this, this is the way it ought to be. No, coincidentally, I started sharing um, concerning what Christian marriage is because many today are forgotten are forgetting our problem you know, because of the life's challenges, because of expectation, because of problems, because of so many things that is overwhelming. So, we are bringing to focus again what marriage, you know, what Christian marriage is. When I say Christian marriage, I'm talking about biblical marriage. The Oga Patakwata, the chairman that you know ordained, you know, originate, you know, started this thing called marriage. What is this ideology? You know, that's what uh, that platform is. And but today, but today this platform is for newlyweds, newly married, new new couples, those who are still fresh in the marriage, because I see Many today are doing tumbo tumbo because there's nobody to offer guidance, and that is serious trouble. You know, there's a reason why even the most hard hearted of us cry at weddings. Some people love everything having to do with parties, maybe moved, you know, by the use of a lot this idea of weddings. That is not the issue. The issue is after wedding. What is the next thing? What are the things that you need to do? What are the scriptures that you are holding on to? No matter Matthew chapter 19, verse 6. So they are no longer one. I said something before. What are the scripture? Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You must come to terms with that. Ephesians 4, 2 to 3. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace i didn't write the scripture first corinthians 13 13 and now these three remain it faith hope and love but the greatest of this is love love is patient first corinthians 13 4 to uh, 5 love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it does, it is not proud it does not dishonor order it is not self-seeking it is not easily hungered it keeps no wrong no record of wrong and now uh, there's another scripture i want to share first corinthians colossians 3 verse 14 and over all this virtue put on love which binds them all together in perfect love now in the only ways i'm talking about i'm talking to christians now from all indication from all the scriptures i've been sharing with you the bedrock is love and not the kind of love that the world is seeing not the kind of love that the world is saying so quickly also what are the things that will help you understand that's what i said understand love god's kind of love selfless love not selfish love not traditional love not worldly love now congr- so i said something say congratulations on your recent wedding so that one year two years now the wedding has been done you are finally married to the guy of your dream what is the next thing you need to put in place? I said, make your spouse your best friend. And you know, one of the challenge, you know, cannot even challenge now. There was a time I had issues with my own wife because so many things was overwhelming her. And then she was drifting, drifting apart. Why she was drifting apart? Information was was not getting to me. So I told her, you're supposed to be my best friend. No, the girl, I, I always you know, use this word for us. I'm not afraid of you. 
you are my friend. So whatever is wrong with you, I will tell you. Whatever is wrong with me, I will tell you. You know, so you don't have to, you know, sever ties with other friends. You see, here some cause some 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 couples, their husbands they have besties, their wives they have besties. I'm asking myself, your your number one bestie should be your husband, your spouse. So when you get married, you should build a relationship with your spouse that will endure through your life. Friends will come and go. Relationship will change. People move and distance strains old friendship, but your spouse will be with you the rest of your life. So keep them in mind as you begin to build a relationship with one another. So make your spouse your best friend. Number two, honor God in your relationship. Don't forget, as a child of God, the person or the personality that created marriage is God. And if you want to succeed in your marriage, then there's a need for you to honor God in your relationship. To build a strong Christian home and family, you must honor God and His word. When you begin ignoring the principle of the Bible, then you cannot expect to have a good relationship. Going to church is important. Reading God's word is important. Devotion is important. Ask God for guidance in your marriage. I foresee in the future, which is already happening, you know, I just said just now, I'm sharing concern Christian marriage. As of last year, 70% of marriages, generally, somebody did a study, and then they gave a percentage in each, um, the way they divided the rural, Asian and all that in Africa. In our general analysis, the seventy percent of marriage is going through divorce. And in our said is it will guess it get worse. Why would it get worse? Many today are not honoring God in their marriage. How do you honor God in your marriage? Follow the lay down principle. Follow the lay lay down manual. What has God said in his word? I remember there was a time I shared about biblical views of marriage, about submitting and then um, the woman submitting the wife, the husband loving. And I told in that class then, I said, whether you like it or not, you cannot love without submitting, you cannot submit, submit without loving. The two work together. And that's why I said here today, the bedrock that will make a marriage succeed is love not traditional love not religious love not worldly love but god's kind of love selfless kind of love say for god so loved the world and he gave he gave the best of the best gift so number one make your spouse your friend number two honor god in your relationship number two respect each other this is paramount Sometimes when I look at um, couples, um, I just even Christian Christian I'm, I'm sorry, Christian couples, the way they relate with each other, I just say, oh, wow, what's happening?" Because some of them they integrate tradition into it. I say, and then there is it is not a friend, friend, uh, fr- friendship, um, um, home where their friends, husband and wife are friends to themselves, but it, it, uh, this is something that is like a lord or a master and a slave relationship. So respecting each other is paramount if you want your home to be homely, if you want your home to be heaven on earth. When you are dating, there was a mutual respect, otherwise you probably would have gotten would have gotten married so don't lose that so in general men like to be respected for their intelligence and physical strength wives feed that ego you know sometimes when my wife does something wrong maybe she took some decision or does some things behind my back and i always tell her you can't be smarter than me i'm a strict person i understand even I, I always encourage you, if you want to lie, make sure you lie, clean lie that I don't know about it. But if I get to know about it, it's trouble. 
So I always tell her, come, men are have ego. And if you want to, you know, enjoy your husband, love your husband, you know, make your husband feel good, feed that ego. It may sound silly to you, but when you respect this strength and ego, you will build a stronger husband who wants to do more and more to cultivate a relationship with you. And I'm, I'm telling you, this is just reality because personally, you know, sometimes some people just say some things, ah, I just feel this person is touching my ego and he doesn't understand, she doesn't understand, doesn't understand. To get a man to misbehave, just touch his ego, then things will go separate ways. So don't forget, number one, for newlyweds, after marriage, after your wedding, there are things that you need to put in perspective. One, make your spouse your best friend. Number two, honor God in your relationship. Number three, respect, respect each other. Number four, honor one another. Beside private respect, you should publicly honor your spouse. Honoring them means to defend them before others. Speak positively and respectfully about your spouse to their friends and family. And coincidentally, something happened recently in my own family. I took my wife, and my, my parents, their understanding about marriage is different from mine. So I took her there, and then they were saying something. Immediately, I said, hey, don't, 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 don't. I'm the only one that's allowed to talk to her. No, it's not your responsibility. My responsibility is to train her. Every time they want to do something, immediately I said, don't. You can't, you can't dishonor her, you can't disrespect her. So you need to respect your spouse in uh, respect your spouse publicly so the one you do privately fine it's important but publicly also learn to honor one another we have all seen in too many situations where spouses speak negatively about one another you know, in this part of the world any small mistake like this some, some even go to the extent of publishing it, publishing it, uh, publishing it in, the, in the social media no so please do not speak negatively, negatively about us, one another. Even at church functions, when men get together with men or women with women, conversations can quickly devolve to complaining about husbands and wives to do this or do that. Don't malign your spouse before others. Build them up with honor and respect. So, behind the stage, in front of the stage, privately, publicly, honor one another so let me quickly close with this number five and i will continue next week keep private matters private meaning no third party like i said bible says for this reason you will leave a man will leave and click to the wife and they shall become one maybe one of these days as you are listening to me later when i finish just go and check christian marriage on a youtube channel on Facebook or Instagram, those are the places I've shared with it. And uh, I know I I I I try as much as to explain what God means by cleaving, what God means by living, what God means by you know uh, joining to one spouse. For you to understand what that means, it means to completely come as in completely separate oneself from any third party. That doesn't mean you don't you don't love them. That doesn't mean you don't relate with them. It means you are starting a new family, building a new family. I remember years ago, God told me, He said, build according to the pattern, just like what God told Moses. So, keep private matters private. Along with honoring one another, you should keep your private life private. When you have problems in your relationship, you seek help from someone qualified to give the help you need. Don't blab your problem to anyone who will listen. Your pastor can help if he is qualified, if he is trained. And this time, I always share this with people. I've seen pastors ruin marriage because they had tradition to it. They are not led by God and they are not trained. So your pastors must be qualified. Your pastor must be trained. That being said, this is 
the newlyweds forum please join me again next week as i continue sharing on newlyweds tips prayers things that will help them survive the first few years of their marriage my prayer is i don't know what you are going through in your marriage god that god will help you maybe you already have issues in your marriage that god will help you strengthen your marriage bring you and your spouse back to focus the original purpose of marriage and uh, if you are listening you need to speak to a counselor uh, you can connect to us on a social media platform at Obadevola Praise O-B-A-D-E-B-O-L-A-P-R-A-I-S-E you can call this number or whatsapp this number plus two three four zero um zero one seven nine triple four five one nine plus two three four zero one seven nine four triple four five one nine god bless you shalom